Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, be talking about uh, different division methods. Um, there are a, a wide range of methods that you can use to, to do division. Not all of them are going to be appropriate uh, for the uh, question you're using. For example, some are only appropriate, are really most useful when you're dealing with whole numbers. Uh, that's like numbers that are, don't have any decimals in them. Um, others are, uh, take a long time to work out. Um, some are uh, short, but they require you to keep uh, numbers and whatnot in your head. So you really need to find the, the method that you're most comfortable with uh, and know it really well to make sure that you use it properly and to be able to identify when the method that you uh, want to use is or is not going to be appropriate for the question that you're working on. So um, uh, I'm going to go through a, a, a range of different methods. It's going to be a, a much longer video than usual, um, but I'm hoping that it'll be uh, of more use uh, to you rather than digging around trying to find uh, examples of the different uh, methods. Uh, just to uh, make sure that we're clear, uh, you can see that I've given you a, a little sample question here. Uh, I've got 15 divided by 3 equals 5. Uh, the 15 here is called the dividend. Uh, the 3 is the divisor and the answer is the quotient. So um, whatever you have that you are um, putting into groups, okay, like I have 15 uh, M&Ms, um, the number 15 is the dividend. Uh, when I want to put those 15 M&Ms into uh, groups of three, uh, then the three is referred to as the divisor, and the answer, um, how many groups of three I'm going to have, uh, is going to be the quotient. Okay? Uh, so we need to make sure that we uh, are, are clear on those three vocabulary terms. Now, uh, these are the division methods that I'm going to be explaining in this video. Uh, there's the standard method, uh, the short method, box method, the expanded notation method, the chunking method using a number line, skip counting, and repeated subtraction. Again, not all of these are going to be useful for you uh, in all types of questions. So you have to pick the method that you are most comfortable with uh, and it's always good to know more than one method. Uh, if you can be very good at two or three different methods uh, that will be much better than knowing just one really well. Okay, so uh, we'll get started with the standard method and uh, good luck. Okay. So this is the uh, standard method. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, the first question is going to be exactly the same one as what I showed you in the um, first slide. Uh, we have uh, 15 M&Ms, which is, again is the dividend, uh, being made into uh, uh, three groups. How many are in each group? Okay, the three is the divisor, and the answer will be the quotient. Okay, so... Um, there are various ways to start, but um, one of the common ways is to say how many times does uh, how many times does three go into uh, one? Uh, it doesn't go into one at all, so you write a zero. Now, if you're very good at this method, then you will not write the zero. But uh, when you're just starting out, it helps to uh, to write the zero just as a placeholder so that you know that your answer, or sorry, that your um, your quotient needs to be in the units column. Okay, so now we say, uh, because there's no uh, sets of 3 in 1, we say how many sets of 3 are there in 15? So now we're looking at both digits together. And if you know your times tables, which um, by now you should, you would know that uh, there are 5 sets of 3 and 15. You write 15 here, and subtract, leaves you with 0. Okay, 
So that means that 15 divided by 3 equals 5. And because there's a 0 here, there are no remainders. Okay? All right. Uh, let's go on to a slightly harder one. Uh, we have 128, which is our dividend. And 4 is our divisor. Okay? And again, our quotient will be written up here. Now, uh, I didn't mention it over here, but I wrote it. Um, you need to make sure that when you are writing the answers in your quotient area here, that they are in the correct columns. That is the big mistake that uh, people learning the standard method make, is they write their digits for the answer in the wrong columns. So make sure that uh, you are uh, paying very close attention to where you're writing the answer. Okay, so again, we look at the 4, and we say, right, does 4 go into uh, 1? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we write a 0. Now we say, right, does 4 go into 12? Okay, so now we're looking at these two digits here. Okay. And again, if you know your times tables, you would know that uh, 3 times 4 is 12. We write that in the tens column. All right, that's basically telling us that there um, are uh, 30 sets of 4 in 120. Okay, but there are, there's more than 120, it's 128. So now we look at all three digits. Now we're looking at 128. Okay, and how many sets of 4 uh, are there in 8? Okay, so we're, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. So uh, 3 times 4 is 12, so we have to subtract that 12. It leaves us with 0. We bring down the 8. Okay, how many times does 4 go into 8? It goes twice. Okay, okay. That leaves us with 0. So that means that uh, our quotient is 32. That's, that means that um, 128 divided by 4 equals 32 with no remainders. Okay? You, uh, it's important to remember that you have to start by going and looking, taking the 4, looking at the 1, the first digit, and then putting how many, how many sets of 4 go into that first digit, then how many sets of 4 go into the first two digits, then how many sets of 4 go into the last digit. Okay? Alright, that's the uh, standard method. Um, and now we are going to go on to uh, the short method. Okay, in this method uh, it's... Uh, much less writing than uh, the long method. However, uh, you do have to still be careful what you're doing and make sure that you're double checking. Okay, in the short method, you basically do exactly the same thing as the long method, but you do less writing. So um, basically, you say how many times does five uh, go into two? Uh, it doesn't go. So what you what you do now is you. Right, 2 here. Now, how many times does 5 go into 25? Well, if you know your times tables, you would say that 5 goes into 25 5 times. Okay? So, now, we say how many times does 5 go into 6? And that is 1. Okay? But now there is 1 left over. And how many times does 5 go into 15? That would be three times. So uh, our answer is 513. Now, just to check that out, if you're not sure if that's right, you can just do some column multiplication and multiply it out, and we should get uh, this number here. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 10 is 50. Add 10 is 60. And 5 times 5 is 25.
2,565. Okay, so um, that works out, and that is the short method. Okay, in the box method, um, as you can see, you um, draw a rectangle, and you separate the rectangle into the hundreds, tens units, or the thousands, tens, thousands, hundreds, tens units, whatever uh, number you have here. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at 873 divided by 5. So I have partitioned the 873 into 870 and 3. And we're dividing it by 5. So 5 is over here. Now in this method, uh, you essentially ask yourself, um, how many sets of 100 uh, how many sets of 5 will go into 800 and then how many into 70 and into 3 and if there is any leftovers from each of these columns they go car they get carried into the next box so let's just see uh, how that works okay so I'm saying how many times does 5 go into 800 well I know I could get uh, at least 100 that would give me 500 um, uh, okay, so I, uh, okay, so, um, I write the 100 up here, and that 100 times 5 is going to give me 500, okay, and you subtract that, okay, so 800 subtract 500 gives me 300, okay, now the 300 gets carried over, to this column here. Okay, so I write 370. Now I ask myself, how many sets of 5 go into 370? Okay. So that would be, uh, okay, that would be about 70. Whoops. 70. So 7 fives, sorry, 70 fives is going to be 350. And the leftover is going to be 20. Okay, so the 20 is left over. I'll just write it down here so easier to see. So it gets carried over here, so 23. And now how many sets of 5 go into 23? Well, it's going to be 4. Okay, and then whatever is left is your remainder. So, uh, remainder 3. Okay, and now you just add this up. So it's going to be 174. Okay, and now obviously to check it, you can do a multiplication. So uh, I'll just try to squeeze it in here. 873 multiplied by, multiplied by 5. Uh, okay, it helps if you use the right numbers. Okay, it should be 174 multiplied by 5. Let's try that again. Okay, so uh, 5, 4 is 20. 7. plus the remainder 3. Okay, so that's correct. Okay, so you can see that I got uh, 5 times uh, 174 gives me 870, but then you have to add on the remainder of 3 here. Okay, so that gives us the correct answer. Okay, now on to the next one. Okay, this is the... Um, expanded notation method and uh, it looks uh, some people also call it the big seven method uh, because this essentially looks like a big seven um, however you call it uh, I, the process is uh, somewhat similar to uh, the pros other processes where they partition okay um, in this case you're saying how many sets of uh, five go into 800 
uh, and you would write that here, 5 times 100, okay, 5 times 100 gives me 500, okay, and 500, okay, and then you subtract, leaves you with 373, okay, and then you say, right, how many times does 5 go into, um, 373, well, uh, it's not going to go uh, 100, um, it'll go 70, which gives you 350, okay, 23, and 5 times 4 gives you 20, Subtract that, leaves you with a remainder of 3. Okay, and now you have to add up this, this, and this. Okay, sorry, I've got, I'm going to take out that, um, this little thing here, because that's confusing. Okay, so you add up that there. Okay, so it's going to be 174, and then you have to remember also to include the remainder 3. Okay. Now, um, what I could have done in this, uh, in this method is instead of bringing down the 373, I could have just brought down the 37. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think I will do that, so hold on, we'll just clear the board and we'll do it again, but we'll do it a slightly different way. Both ways are fine, but um, uh, I just feel like uh, I'll explain both ways just uh, to make sure you understand. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, uh, another way of doing the expanded notation method. Uh, again, 873 divided by 5. Uh, you can say that 5 times 100 Okay, it gives you 500, and you just write the 5 here. You subtract it. It leaves you with 3 here, and then you bring down the 7. As you can see, this looks very much like long division. The only difference is that you're actually physically writing out over here, okay, what you're doing. Um, some people say that it helps them keep track of, of what they've done. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, okay, so now we say how many times does 5 go into 37? We would say that it would be 5 times 7, sorry, 70, uh, but you have to write 35 here, okay, because you're actually 350, okay, and then you're left with 2 here, 37 subtract 35 is 2, you bring down this 3, leaves you with 23, 5 times 4 is 20, and remainder 3 again, and again, you have to remember to add up these numbers here, which gives you 174, and then your remainder 3, remainder 3, okay, um, However method you want you want to do, if you decide to do this method, is totally up to you. Okay, the uh, the best way to explain the chunking method using a number line is just to uh, is just to do it really. Um, so, uh, for example, we um, we make our first jump, and um, since I'm pretty confident in math. Uh, I might make a jump of uh, of a hundred, so I would write five times one hundred, okay? And where would that get me? That would get me to five hundred here, okay? Um, then I might make another jump of, mm, let's see, I have to go about another three hundred and seventy, so uh, maybe another. uh 70 okay five times 70 which would give me 
uh, 850, okay, and then I'm only going to go uh, 850 to 873, that's only 23, so uh, I know these jumps don't, don't look very uh, uh, appropriately sized, but um, you get the idea. Um, and then five times, uh, what, four would give me 870, okay, and then plus three would be my remainder. Okay, actually, I'll, count, I'll circle the remainder in a different color so I don't get confused. Um, so now, basically, what you need to do is uh, all of these uh, amounts here you need to circle and add them up so it's going to be 100 plus 70 plus 4 equals 174 and then plus your remainder over here um, gets tacked on at the end okay and that's basically how you do it so obviously if you are not very confident in math you might not make such large jumps as 100 okay you might go uh, 5 times 20 um, uh, or you might just go 5 times 10 a whole bunch of sets of, of 10 um, instead of the 100 and the 70 and the 4 okay but the general idea is the same uh, regardless of of which um, which chunks you, you decide to use okay okay on to the next one Okay, skip counting is uh, essentially the times tables. Um, you basically go from um, uh, 0 to 5, then 10, then 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on. And you count how many steps up you've got you've done so here's this is one two three four five and so on uh, the problem with skip counting and our example here is that you're going to go an awfully long time uh, counting in sets of five to get to 873 uh, so this method uh, as i mentioned at the beginning of this uh, video uh, this is one of those methods which is really only appropriate for uh, two-digit divisions where you might have, you know, uh, 70 divided by uh, 8 or something like that, which is uh, probably going to be on the times tables uh, uh, below 12. Um, otherwise, it's, uh, it's not totally uh, useful for our purposes uh, using this question. So just to give you a, a good idea of how it might be used if you if you did have a question, let's uh, stick with uh, 70 divided by 8. So again, we're going to start with 0. We go to 8, 16, 24, uh, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, Okay. All right, so uh, again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and we won't. We don't need this one because we're uh, past seventy-two. So, or past seventy. So, if we're looking at this question here, uh, we want to get as close to seventy on the eight times table as we can, without going over. That's the important part. It cannot be bigger than seventy. And so, what I've done is I've gotten as close to 70 as I can using the 8 times table down here and the closest I can get is 64 
okay? So how did I get there? I got there by doing 8 times 8. So that means that 70 divided by 8 is going to be 8 here, and I got that 8 from here, because that was the 8th jump. It's going to be 8, okay? And now 64, what did I add to 64 to get to 70? Okay, so I'm over here, 64. I want to get to 70. What did I have to add to 64 to get to 70? I had to add 6, so it's going to be remainder 6. Okay? Okay, on to the next one. Okay, in repeated subtraction, basically what you do is you start with your number that you're, um, oops, you start with your number that you're using here, okay? And uh, it's a little bit like uh, chunking in the sense that uh, you take the number that you're going to be dividing it into, or dividing it by, and then uh, you decide what sort of, what size chunks you're going to use. Okay, so again, the, the best way to explain it is just to do it. Um, okay, so I've decided that uh, I'm going to go in chunks of 50. So um, I know that 5 times 100 is 500. So 5 times 50 is going to be 250. So I need to subtract 250. Okay, and put brackets around that. So now I just subtract, okay, 3 subtract 0 is 3, 70 subtract 50 is 20, and 800 subtract 200 is 600, okay? Now I'm going to subtract another 250, okay, so 3 subtract 0 is, oops, 3, uh, 20 subtract 50, I'll need to borrow, so that's going to be 500. Okay, so uh, that's 120, so that's uh, 70, and then 500 subtract 200 is 300. Okay, so I'm left with 373. Uh, I can take another uh, 250 away, so 5 times 50, 250. Okay, so 3 subtract 0 is 3, 70 subtract 50 is 20, and 300 subtract 200 is 100. Okay, and now I can go 5 times 20. Okay, that'll give me 100. So, let me just move over here now. Um, 123 subtract 100 gives me 23. And I can go 5 times 4, gives me 20, and I subtract it, 3 subtract 0 is, keep doing that, 3, and then 2 subtract, uh, sorry, 20 subtract 20 is 0, so my remainder is 3. Okay, so uh, that's basically how you do it. Uh, now the next step is to count up these numbers here. So you got a 50, a 50, a 50, a 20, uh, and a 4 here. So that's going to be uh, 50 plus 50 is 100, 150, 170 plus this 4 is going to be 174, remainder 3. Okay, and that is repeated subtraction. I hope this video has been of some use to you. Um, don't get too put off if I've made uh, mistakes like uh, here and whatnot. Uh, when you're doing your working out, you make mistakes. You have to uh, double check your work and uh, uh, that's how you learn. All right. Uh, it also catches you if you're being a little bit slack. Okay, so I hope this has been of some use to you. Good luck.